Hello everyone and welcome to this my first of three videos on the Canon EOS Rebel T2i. This first video is going to cover everything on the camera, what it is. The second video will talk about how to do everything this camera can do except the menu system. And then the third video will go through the menu system in detail and explain what every menu item is and how it affects your photography. So without further ado, let's just start running through this camera. The Canon EOS Rebel T2i is an APS-C format digital single lens reflex camera. What that means is that there is an APS-C format sensor behind the mirror. See, maybe you can kind of see back there the shutter and that's the covering the sensor. Single lens reflex means it uses a single lens. The light passes through the lens to that mirror up to the reflex system inside this housing up here. And that what you see in the viewfinder is what's coming through the lens. For the sensor itself, the APS-C format sensor is an 18 megapixel CMOS sensor. The camera uses a 63 zone meter with evaluative spot, partial, and center weighted modes. So what that means is if you imagine that what you're seeing right now is what this camera is seeing for its metering, it divides this area, this whole scene that you're seeing into 63 different modes, uh, 63 different areas. And it then uses the data from that to calculate the best exposure based on things like, I, I, as I understand it, uh, I don't know the technical details of how, how Canon has it, but it should include things like distance, lighting, color, uh, tone, and so on and so forth to, to create a good exposure. Spot metering takes an area that is 4% of the total sensor size and puts 100% of the metering information right there. We'll talk about how that works in the second video. Partial metering takes a slightly larger 9% area and then works in the same manner. And then center weighted takes an area in the center of the frame and the majority of the metering information comes from that center area and the balance comes from outside of the center. With partial and spot, 100% come from that metering area. Shutter speeds on this camera are 1 4,000th of a second to 30 seconds with bulb, and it has a 3.7 frame per second burst speed. The viewfinder magnification is 0.87x with 95% frame coverage. What that means is that what you see in here is going to be 87% of the size of what will reach your sensor, and you'll have 95% of the frame. So let's assume that what you're seeing right now is what's going to be recorded in your image. 95% frame coverage means that about 2.5% on each side and the top and bottom will be on your sensor, but not in your viewfinder. The ISO range for this camera is 100 to 12,800 as well as auto. And the flash sync speed is 1 200th of a second. And this camera can record video at, with, uh, at a, great, a resolution of 1080p and 24 frames per second. The target market for the EOS Rebel T2i was entry level users. And we know that because the, the EOS Rebel was the entry level badge in the North American market. In Japan, this was called the KISS X4, and the KISS cameras were the ones that were the entry-level cameras. And outside of Japan and the North America, this would have been called the 550D, and the three-digit cameras were the entry were one of the entry-level tiers. This was made by Canon in Japan in 2010, quite an old camera at this point. It was preceded by the T1i and followed by the T3i. Now, if you have your Canon EOS Rebel T2i, we're going to go over all of the features and on the top of the camera first and talk about what all of them are. And then in the second video, we talk about what all of them do. So here on right here on each side, these are strap uh, bars. And what you can do is connect your strap to them. This is the sensor plane indicator. So this indicates where the sensor plane is on the camera. So if you're doing high magnification microscopy or something like that, and you need to take exact measurements for enlargement this would be the point you take the measurement from. This is the pop-up flash right here. Flash hot shoe, mode dial. This is your index to tell you what mode you're set to. On off button. These indicators will indicate what the buttons on the back of the camera are. ISO selection button, command wheel. Yeah, there's only one command wheel on this camera. Shutter button. On the camera's front, we have a few things here to look at. Over here on this side, we have the infrared sensor for the remote uh, remote release, autofocus assist beam. This is your lens mount. 
lens mounting indices. Red dot is for EF lenses. White square is for EFS lenses. Lens release button and lens locking pin. Here kind of on the side of the prism is a f the flash release button. This is a microphone for your uh, on-camera audio. And down here is the depth of field preview button. Yeah, on this side right here. And uh, that's it for the front. On the back of the camera, here we have the menu button, the display button, the viewfinder eyepiece. Here we have eye sensors, so the camera knows when your eye is up to the viewfinder. Here we have a diopter adjuster. And I do not have the diopter range written down in my notes, but when, when you use the diopter adjuster, it provides a little bit of adjustment in here so that you can account for minor um, eyeglasses prescriptions, for instance. And the way to use this, the easiest way, is to get something like a pencil and put it in a binder clip so it's not gonna move and just set it upright so it's stationary. And then you're going to use your lens, focus the lens manually at the closest focus point and with the camera on a tripod, move it in and out until that pencil's tip is in focus in your uh, with live view, pref preferably. And then when you know that your live view is in focus, you know that your focus point is accurate, then you come up here, turn off live view, come up here to your, your viewfinder and adjust your diopter until what's in your diopter matches what's on your live view screen. And that's how you know that you've calibrated your, your diopter for your eyesight with what's actually going to, going to be in proper focus on your sensor. Here's your li uh, movie mode, movie record and live view button. This is the asterisk button. This is your autofocus point button. The blue functions underneath them will only be used during playback mode. This is zoom out to see multiple files at once. This is zoom in to see uh, closer detail in a file. If you've zoomed in to see closer detail in a file, you can zoom out to see the whole image with this button as well. This is your aperture value or uh, actually should be technically, co technically called exposure value compensation button. Quick button, white balance, drive mode, autofocus, set, picture control, playback, delete, SD card access lamp here. When this lights up, your SD card is being written to. Don't remove your SD card if that's lit up. And here we have a speaker for when you play back videos on your camera. And of course, the LCD screen. On this side of the camera, we have the SD card port. And in the second video, very early on, we'll talk about SD cards for this camera and what kind of options you have. This side of the camera has a few different ports on it. So we'll lift up this rubber cover and it's got your mic, remote control, AV out and HDMI ports. So if I can get this out of the way, can I? Well, uh, that'll do. Okay, <laughs> here's your microphone port. So if you have an external mic, you can plug it into here and that will record audio. Here's your remote control port. So if you're using a corded remote control instead of an IR remote control, this is where it plugs in. This is the audio visual, they're calling it AV out digital. That honestly looks like a mini USB port to me. So I'm guessing that's for, um, it really does look like a mini USB. So it's probably a dual use port. Realistically, um, if it is a mini USB, then this is a, as of this video's recording, at least 10 year old camera. And that's gonna be like a mini USB 2 with very slow data rates. You're going to have faster data transfer, just taking the SD card out of your camera, popping it into your computer and tra transferring the files that way. And then here we have an HDMI port and the HDMI port allows you to connect to a t an HDTV so that you can play a slideshow or videos from this camera back on that TV. Not something I have ever done in my life. Uh, I don't even own a TV. So um, I'm not gonna be able to tell you how to, the ins and outs of how to do that. On the camera's bottom, we have a tripod socket here. Canon, the, the, this is called the T2i, but the universal designation for it is DS126271. Serial number, made in Japan. Why do I have not made in Japan in here? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, I did have it correct in the notes, Never mind. Camera's made in Japan. A uh, bunch of registration info, and this is your battery chamber. And in the second video, we'll talk about batteries for this camera. I do have some tips on how to get the most out of the Canon EOS Rebel T2i. The first is that EFS lenses are fine. I'm using an EFS lens on this camera right now. They, they save money, they're affordable, and they're also really good. Most EFS lenses perform very well on these sensors for technical reasons. 
in a nutshell, uh, an image larger image sensor needs a larger image circle, smaller Im image sensor needs a smaller image circle. These generally, like this EFS, does project an almost full frame image circle, but and that means when you use the APS-C sensor, you get more of the best part of the image generating light passing through this lens than you would if you were using an equivalent lens on full frame. So there are some image quality benefits to EFS lenses and they tend to be less expensive. Uh, 18 megapixels as a still image sensor is still very capable in 2024 as I'm recording this, still a very capable image format megapixel size. The 1080p video is lacking in video quality for things like long form YouTube or product video where you really do wanna be going with 4K anymore. But for videos on TikTok, YouTube shorts or Instagram feeds, uh, 1080p is completely workable because that's still very good for, uh, for phone screen playback. So if you're creating specifically for a smartphone consumer market, this could still be a very capable camera for that type of use. Some things not to do with your camera, don't store it in your car because heat can damage the plastic body, heat can dam damage the lubricating oils in the lenses, heat can damage the rubber. Extreme cold can damage those same things as well. Also, good theft target. Don't, don't leave your camera in your car, even if you're just running in to run a short errand before or after a shoot, always take your camera with you. Don't touch the mirror that's behind the lens. Don't touch the, the shutter or the sensor. The touching the mirror, your finger oils can tarnish it, which can affect your ability to focus and meter with this camera. Touching the sensor or the uh, can leave a fingerprint on it, which is an absolute nightmare to clean off. And getting your finger oils on the shutter or touching the shutter itself can cause that shutter to jam. You don't want to do that because that's a really good way to brick your camera or result uh, or cause yourself to have a very expensive repair. Don't let your Canon EOS Rebel T2i get wet. It is not. It's not weather sealed and uh, water and electronics have a long history of not getting along and that's not going to change in this camera. Don't store your camera in a plastic bag or box unless you have a rechargeable desiccant pack because plastic is moisture permeable. If moisture gets in, it's very hard for it to get out and it can cause fungus to grow on your optics, mildew to grow in your, in your grip. Not a good situ situation at all. And just remember, your Canon EOS Rebel T2i is a precision tool that should be handled with care and respect. As long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you.